when this thing first came out, um, a lot of people were saying that it sounds exact, the same as a Helix. I might have been one of those people. I think at this point now, we know enough about it. it's got a different processor, it doesn't have a guitar input impedance circuit, and there's certain things that you can't do on it that you can do on a Helix, like dual cabs and parallel paths. Regardless of whether it uses the same models, which it does, as the other stuff, the results that you can get out of Podgo are going to be different. I don't think that's a controversial statement at this point, but today I wanted to build a tone that I really liked on it, and I'm going to show you how I built that tone at the introduction there. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments and tricks that you might use with the Podgo if you've got any for building tones. I've come across one that I think I'm going to use a little bit more often. Um, let me know if you use your Podgo still, or did you uh, take the plunge and upgrade to an HX Stomp or anything like that. See you in a sec. So, as someone who's a massive fan of the Line 6 Helix HX Dom HX Dom XL, um, the Pod Go was something I was quite interested in at launch. There are some differences, you know, you can't do parallel paths, you can't do dual cabs, you can't do a few of the things that I think I rely on within Helix World to kind of get some of the tones that I'm into. I started putting together this preset, and what I found was so this is built around a matchless DC30, channel 1, drive at 5, bass at 5, cut at 0, treble at 5, presence at 0. Um, so all very standard kind of settings. And then I'm going into the matchless 2x12 match H30. Now I really like to use dual cabs, we can't do that in the Podgo. So I've opted for the 87 condenser, 1 inch away, 80 hertz, low cut. 7.8 kilohertz high cut and we got the early reflections up at 48 percent so the core tone uh, would have sounded like this uh, so this is neck pickup and so i wanted something with a bit more sparkle maybe a bit more touch response stuff so i've got we've got an eq that's always available within so there's this eq tilt type so i've set the brightness there to 35 around the one kilohertz frequency So it's a little bit less bloated and a little bit brighter. And as I back off the volume, I should hopefully... ...keep a little bit more sparkle. So um, normally I'm a fan of darker tones, but I'm thinking maybe we need a little bit more brightness in the front of the pod go. You know, some people have experimented using buffers. Um, and I've had some interesting results. So that was one trick that I found that sort of helped out a little bit. Beyond that, you know, we've now got the dynamic plate, which sounds beautiful. And one of my favourite uh, delays in here is the Elephant Man. Now, all of the models in the Podgo are stereo as well, so you can not make little savings by choosing mono things before the cab. They're kind of all stereo, uh, but if you put them before the cab, I think they end up collapsing to mono anyway. Uh, be all down the centre, and this would be stereo. So. Bear that in mind, so if you want the stereo effects, which you're using DSP-wise anyway, you might as well put it post-cab. Settings here, I've got the time at a quarter, the feedback at 60%, chorus mode, uh, the depth at 1.5, and the mix at 37%. Uh, scale is at 70%, that's why you're getting it tapping. Spread I got at zero, I think that's the chorus effect. Uh, noise at zero, and headroom plus 12. Uh, I'll turn these trails on as well actually. Um, 
But yeah, that's the... That's that, and then I put a, a little tremolo auto pan after the delay, speed at 1.9, intensity at 2, sine wave, and spread 0, level at 0. Just for a bit of movement in the sound. I guess what would happen if I increased the spread? I mean, I am legitimately really enjoying that tone. So despite having to make a few compromises, I think you can still get there with the Podgo. Now, what I've done for this second snapshot, this Stupa OD, the Boss SD1 comes on. This gave me the sort of clipping that I wanted in front of this amp, sort of smoothish, drive at 4.4, tone at 2.7. And what I've also done is taken the high cut here down to 2.9 kilohertz. with the bridge pickup So in conclusion, I would say yes, you can get great tones out of the Podgo. I would consider this maybe going forward as a as a way to sort of change the way that we're responding at the front of the Podgo. Um, if you're finding that you're thinking things sound maybe a little bit boxy and you're thinking maybe I'm missing a bit of brightness, a bit of spank, instead of chucking it on the amp and on the cab, maybe an EQ up front can help to bring a little bit of life to some of the models, give it a tiny bit of a lift. Let me know if you want me to drop this into the Podgo folder. I'm really enjoying that tone to play. I think it sounds pretty. Hope you do too. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in another video soon. Cheers.